meet a guy who stumbled upon a supersuit in 1981, turning his life into a hilarious, shocking, and sometimes sad adventure. Ever wondered about a superhero who can't quite get the hang of his powers? That's the greatest American hero for you. Have you ever shared a personal story about how this TV series impacted your life? Or do you remember the first time you caught a glimpse of our hero struggling with his newfound abilities? There's a lot more to this classic show than meets the eye. Funny, shocking, and sad this series has it all. And there's more where that came from. Keep watching to unveil the layers of this superhero's journey. Now we want to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this TV series? Drop your stories and memories in the comments below. Your tales might just be as captivating as the greatest American hero's adventures. Stay tuned for more surprises in this epic journey through the world of a reluctant superhero. Can't wait to read your stories. The 1981 TV series The Greatest American Hero presents a unique take on the superhero genre. Despite varying opinions among viewers, the show features a central idea that explores how an ordinary person handles possessing superpowers through a peculiar suit. The premise revolves around Ralph Hinckley, portrayed by William Catt, who grapples with the responsibilities that come with his newfound abilities. The series, over time, introduces viewers to a trio of characters, including Ralph Hinckley, Bill Maxwell, played by Robert Culp, and Pamela Davidson, portrayed by Connie Selica. Their dynamic proves pivotal in sustaining the show's appeal, and the chemistry among the cast contributes to the series' longevity. Initial impressions may have varied, as evidenced by differing opinions on the show's quality. Some critics expressed dissatisfaction with the lost potential for greatness, while others acknowledged the intriguing concept and character dynamics. Despite the mixed reception, the show garnered attention and achieved popularity during its run. As the narrative unfolds, some viewers note a shift in tone from the lighthearted innocence of the first season to a more serious tone marked by an increasing body count. Additionally, critiques include a perceived decline in creativity, with the writers seemingly running out of ideas for involving the central characters, leading to frequent episodes centered around field trips. Acknowledging the series' impact and enduring popularity, some enthusiasts suggest the potential for a movie adaptation. This sentiment is accompanied by casting preferences, such as Paul Bettany as Ralph Hinckley, Jennifer Connelly as Pamela Davidson, and Paul Giamatti as Bill Maxwell. While personal nostalgic sentiments may influence individual reviews, there remains an appreciation for the show's central premise, character interactions, and the potential for a broader cinematic adaptation. Whether one views the greatest American hero as a missed opportunity or an enduring classic, its place in television history is undeniable. The Greatest American Hero, a TV series from 1981, paved the way for the superhero genre with its unique premise. The show introduces Ralph Hinckley, portrayed by William Catt, an ordinary man grappling with the responsibilities of possessing superpowers through a peculiar suit. Alongside him are characters like Bill Maxwell, played by Robert Culp, and Pamela Davidson, portrayed by Connie Selica, forming a dynamic trio that sustains the series' appeal. Notably, the series holds the distinction of being the first production from Stephen J. Cannell Productions to feature the iconic Cannell writing and tearing a sheet from his typewriter logo. This logo became synonymous with the production house's subsequent works. In 1983, an unsuccessful pilot for a spin-off series titled The Greatest American Heroine was produced, but it remained unaired until 1986 when it screened as the final episode in syndication. This spin-off attempted to expand the superhero universe, but faced setbacks in its execution. The show found its place in popular culture as it was humorously parodied in an episode of Robot Chicken titled Yancey the Yo-Yo Boy. This acknowledgement further underscores its impact and recognition beyond its original airing. Despite mixed critical reception, it gained popularity during its run, with viewers expressing varying opinions on its quality and potential. Over time, the series experienced a shift in tone marked by a move from lighthearted innocence to a more serious narrative with increased tension and stakes, including a rising body count. The enduring popularity of the series has sparked discussions among enthusiasts about the potential for a cinematic adaptation. Speculations on casting preferences, such as Paul Bettany, Jennifer Connelly, and Paul Giamatti, have circulated among fans who remain nostalgic about the central premise and character interactions. 
in a testament to its cultural impact, its legacy extends beyond its original run, and discussions about its potential return or adaptation continue to resonate among fans. The series remains a significant milestone in the history of television, paving the way for unconventional superhero narratives. Connie Selica's screen time diminished in the second season due to her real-life pregnancy. Both William Kant and Robert Culp had prior appearances in the Perry Mason series. Despite facing a lawsuit from DC Comics over alleged similarities to Superman, the show's concept aligns more closely with another DC Comics character, Green Lantern, who receives a power ring from an alien to become a superhero. The show's second season saw a reduced presence of Connie Selica, attributed to her real-life pregnancy. Meanwhile, William Catt and Robert Culp, familiar faces from Perry Mason, added their season performances to the series. While DC Comics sought legal action, claiming parallels to Superman, the show's premise bears a stronger resemblance to Green Lantern's narrative. Like Green Lantern, the protagonist is bestow wood with extraordinary powers through an otherworldly item. Michael Paré made his TV debut and earned his second acting credit through The Greatest American Hero. The series marked a significant milestone in his career, introducing him to the television landscape. The show's theme song, performed by Joey Scarberry, became a standout feature. Released as a single, it climbed to two on the Billboard charts in the summer of 1981, adding a musical dimension to the show's popularity. In the UK, the series faced a delayed release due to the TV holdback rule imposed on films with a cinematic release. The pilot film had a UK cinema release around 1982-1983, leading to a four-year wait for viewers before it could finally be shown in 1985-1986. In summary, Michael Perret's TV debut, the memorable theme song by Joey Scarberry, and the delayed UK release due to cinema rules are noteworthy aspects of the greatest American hero. In 22, Disney reportedly planned a feature film adaptation of the TV series, Two years after ABC canceled the show, NBC picked it up for reruns on Sunday nights. Speculation arose about a revival, but efforts resulted only in the greatest American heroine pilot. Notably, the main actor's real-life mother, Barbara Hale, portrayed the protagonist mother in a second season episode, adding a personal touch to the series and showcasing the bond among cast members. The attempt to extend the series with the greatest American heroine faced challenges and remained unaired until 1986. Despite mixed critical reception, the show found a place in popular culture, even being humorously parodied in an episode of Robot Chicken titled Yancey the Yo-Yo Boy. Reduced screen time for one of the lead actors in the second season was due to a real-life pregnancy. Meanwhile, both William Catt and Robert Culp, known from Perry Mason, continued their season performances. The show faced legal issues with DC Comics over alleged similarities to Superman, although its premise aligns more closely with Green Lantern's narrative. Michael Paré made his TV debut in the series, marking a significant milestone in his career. The theme song, performed by Joey Scarberry, became a standout feature, climbing to number two on the Billboard charts in the summer of 1981. The series also faced a delayed UK release due to cinema rules, with the pilot film having a UK cinema release around 1982-1983, finally reaching viewers in 1985-1986. In summary, the series left an impact on Michael Perret's career, featured a memorable theme song, and dealt with legal challenges. The delayed UK release also added an interesting dimension to its international reception. 